This is the GAC Weekly presented by the Great American Conference. I'm Joey McWilliams, and good morning. We're live right now, and we're going to be talking about, uh, well, the new year ahead and the old year that is behind. It is year number eight in the GAC. We've talked about that a couple of times, but it's also, hey, this is the fifth season of the GAC Weekly as well, so uh, I'm kind of excited about that. And not only that, we've been delving so much into video. It's a lot of fun. Now, we're going to get to see this next guy here pretty soon but right now I have him on the phone and we are live right now with Eric Moyer the Associate Commissioner for Communications for the Great American Conference good morning Eric good morning Joey it's good to get to hear from you and listen the thing that I want to get to this morning is the Legacy Awards now this is something this is a fan voting opportunity to talk about uh, some some very good things in the Great American Conference this goes back to 2017, 2018, and the voting went on by way of Twitter over the course of the last couple of weeks. Now, Legacy Awards, lauding excellence in the Great American Conference yearly. I like those acronyms. You're good with that. I, I took a lot of time trying to uh, playing off of the uh, SP theme of excellence in sports performance yearly and just thinking of words that would connote something similar and uh, stumbled into Legacy and that it has, you know, a, you know, you obviously leave a legacy, and uh, it, it's played out well, and no one's come up with a better word since. So that's what they <laughs> the actually use. Well, there you go. Until somebody has something better, right? That's right. Okay. Well, in the you're meantime, gonna critique, in the you're gonna <laughs> critique, offer a solution. <laughs> well, in the meantime, let's let's talk about a couple of those things really quickly. There were 12, 12 uh, things for which the fans could vote. Now, there were some similarities and actually a couple of uh, not really crossovers, but places where, you know, you look at it and go, this might uh, duplicate just a little bit uh, with some winners that were there. So let's start with what I have at the top of my list. Team of the year, the Harding football team received the largest percentage of the vote. That was 47%. Now, there were four different choices on each one of these opportunities to vote so 47 percent with four choices that's pretty good harding football the team of the year eric yeah and uh if you did ask them at the end of september last year you thought this would have been like a, a farce poll when they started off zero and three but then um you know obviously they rallied won their last eight in the regular season got in the playoffs and knocked off three top 10 teams uh on the road and, and thus claimed a region championship and got to the national semifinals which uh Unfortunately, seems to be our uh, our, uh, <laughs> our stumbling block when we get uh, when we in searching that first team national championship. The other nominee, uh, you know, uh, SAU softball uh, also reaching you know the national semifinals. Tech men's golf reached the match play uh, of the of the uh, national finals there in in golf. Uh, had to lose out a tiebreaker because one of their golfers couldn't compete, and a tiebreaker system that. Uh, we were all scrambling to find what it was. <laughs> uh, we learned that it was not going to go with Tech's way. Um, and then the last one, maybe these two cost other votes, but Tech Volleyball, while they didn't have the uh, national tournament success, no one could dispute their, their placing on here as they went 35-0 and 0, um, throughout the regular season in the conference tournament and got as high as uh, eighth in the country. So we, we you know, our uh, Blue Ribbon panel of experts – uh, dubbed them as, as, as earning that last spot uh, over several other uh, you know worthy candidates, teams like Oklahoma Baptist Tennis and Southeastern Tennis and Oklahoma Baptist Cross Country that all uh, you know had advancements in the postseason, um, but none of them I guess reached the level in the polls uh, during the regular season as as Tech uh, volleyball. Speaking right now with Eric Moyer, who is the Associate Commissioner for Communications in the Great American Conference. Eric, these two are uh, joined, I would say. Game of the Year and Play of the Year. The Game of the Year was the Northwestern Southern Nazarene men's basketball game, which came down to a last-second shot, which also won the title of Play of the Year. Brandon Green with a buzzer beater for Northwestern to knock Southern Nazarene from the ranks of the unbeaten in conference play at that point in time. Game of the year, Northwestern, Southern Nazarene got 46% of the vote, and the uh, Brandon Green buzzer beater, 33% of the vote in that category. Yeah, hard not to have those two tied together. What helps make 
a great game is a great finish and nothing does better than a, a last second heave um, like Brandon Green hit there. Uh, certainly also uh, adds to that game is stakes. As you mentioned, Southern Nazarene being undefeated uh, and Northwestern and route to having their most successful year in division two and getting, I think 22 wins. Uh, and they ended up being our two seed and we're right on the precipice of perhaps getting a, a bid to regionals. Um, the game being at Northwestern, uh, adding to that, you know, that delirious uh, home crowd that Alva's <laughs> become known for um, during their time in the league. Uh, all those factors played a role um, in those two in those two moments winning. Um, again, looking at the nominees, you know, you could have had a hard time arguing with with any of the record uh, home runs that Brooke Goad uh, hit, which he hit their 80th home run to um, set the D2 national record. It was, a, it was uh, up there for Player of the Year. A play of the year was a play that finished second. Was a play that you, uh, Michael, uh, and Michael called at our baseball tournament with the Henderson State center fielder Haskins making a play that earned himself a spot on the uh, Sports Center top ten list. Uh, you know, game of the year. A couple other ones that you saw: the uh, Parting in Tech volleyball final that went to five sets with Tech again trying to protect that undefeated season. Um, the uh, Southwestern women basketball team taking on Oklahoma Baptist in a one-eight game. You know, you wouldn't think that would ever be a nominee when you support <laughs> off, but Oklahoma Baptist gets out to a 15-point lead or point so in the fourth quarter. Then Southwestern scores, I believe, 23 in a row. I think to, it was 25. Uh, even better. <laughs> uh, to see off the upset bid. And then, you know, what was going during the regular season, I, I think uh, our game of the year was the uh, the Washita SAU uh, football clash down there in El Dorado. Uh Again, it went back and forth and, and saw, you know, Washington score in the final seconds, and I think SAU even have a throw to the end zone on a Hail Mary. Uh, and certainly two of our better teams there. Uh, so, again, the hardest thing with Twitter is, is that everything gets down to, to four nominees. So in spots where there are fifth and sixth really good choices, uh, you know, you kind of look at, uh, in some instances, schools that haven't been represented as much. So you, 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 you give them the nod if it's, a, if it's close. Uh, to have them be represented so that their fans can, can get out and vote for theirs. Um, but you know, both of these, I, I think, as I'm looking at here, you know, combined those two had over 2,000 votes. Uh, so strong turnout for, in both, and, and certainly the Northwestern Southern Nazarene game and play. Uh, very worthy winners. And, and when, you, when you get a chance to hear those interviews from, from Coach Dearden and from, from Brandon, uh, you know, the, uh, the excitement still carries with them even, you know, eight months, six months later. Right, and let's promote that, too, because those interviews, you can see them. Um, if you go to the GAC Twitter page, you can follow the links there and get the interviews from the winners of these Legacy Awards. Now, if you uh, don't follow the GAC on Twitter, well, you should, at GAC Athletics. So go ahead and check that out, and you can see all those interviews with the Legacy Award winners. Coach of the Year. Joey, to interrupt you ever so fast, the original destination is our Facebook page. Well, you go that's there true. If you follow us on, on the face, your fans on the Facebook page, uh, they all they're all originally there. And uh, in short order, when all twelve are, are posted, there will be a, a story online uh, at Great American Great American Conference dot com. You think I'd know our website off the top of my head <laughs> like that? Um, and they'll all be there this afternoon once all of them uh, all of them load. And and by the way, and forgive me, Eric, because you can see which social media uh, direction I head. Uh, more often, I, I think I go to, to Twitter more often. It's just part of it. I don't know. I don't know what Everyone it is about has that. their preference. Everyone has their Twitter, preference. Twitter, Twitter can't really hold a ten-minute video. Well, that's uh, that's true. So it links well. to links to something else. I'm not a Snapchat guy. Do I look like a Snapchat guy? I don't think. Um, I have daughters pass. that can do. Oh yeah, pass. <laughs> just gonna go. <laughs> oh, my daughters can do Snapchat. I don't really do Snapchat as well. Instagram. I need to get better on that. Let's go back. Let's go ahead and I know move on. Some, I know some folks who are really strong at promoting Snapchat and Instagram uh, photos. I think both you and I are tested out of that demo. I, I think so. I, th I think that's <laughs> that's probably better for everyone. Um, it's better for Cro Coach Christy Beyer if we talk about her now. Coach of the Year, as in her final season as the head coach at Arkansas Tech, she led the Golden Suns to a 35-0 and regular season record and garnered 35% of the vote in that Twitter poll. Yeah, uh, you know, much of being up there for, for team of the year, 
I think all except for for Coach Anderson there at Tech, I think that the the, the pairings were, were basically the same. We swapped out uh, uh, Amy for um, as the nominee there because uh, Tech also, you know, they won uh, the GAC championship for a fifth time and and made the nationals uh, yet again. Uh, so we gave her that uh, that fourth spot there. Uh, but again, none of these nominees, you're going to have a hard time, you know, really, you know, you're really nitpicking there. It does come down to, you know, fan support and fan vote um, on all these polls. And, and Christy's story, you know, as you mentioned, with there being her last year there, uh, you know, she knew it was going to be that way. Uh, they were going to, you know, move the family to, to Kansas. Um, and just the, the story of them, you know, being able to, to fend off every all challengers, right. um, you know, certainly uh, a worthy nominee. And worthy winner, and, and certainly she, uh, uh, pardon the pun, has left a legacy across the GAC <laughs> during her whole time there, uh, during the seven years there. I believe she won five Coach of the Year awards, maybe four. I think it's four, four or five, multiple Coach of the Year awards within her sport. Um, and this is an honor I'm sure she treasures just as much as those. <laughs> I hope she does. And and we're not going to pardon the pun because I'm I'm sure you did that on purpose. The most outstanding performance at a Division II championship. And this comes from uh, um, a program that you don't often or at least always associate with the GAC. Uh, this comes from uh, our track with uh, the Oklahoma Christian uh, track program and Lennon Huslig, who garnered 36% of the vote winning a national championship. Yeah, when you mention that it's the first national championship that the GAC gets to celebrate, uh, you know, an affiliate member or not, he runs under the GAC flag, and uh, you know we were all too excited to or to, to see that uh, that result come in over Memorial Day weekend, uh, as we were following both that and the SAU uh, softball run there in Virginia. Um, and for those that haven't seen the the finish, the video is still, I believe, pinned to the top of our Twitter page. It's an all-out lunge. Uh, for him to edge out the the title, and then you, you learn uh, in the interview that in that lunch he broke his arm. <laughs> um, so he what a story! Gave, he certainly gave every every ounce he had to to win that title. He'd been so close uh, the previous years, taking finishing the top four and, and I think fourth and third uh, the past couple of years. Um, so he was someone that you know when you're trying to map out who it might be that he was certainly a contender and, and for him to come through it was just very exciting to see um and uh you know we were uh, eager to, to 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 put him in there uh you know as a nominee um and uh, the support showed having all of oklahoma christians uh support behind that one to give to, you know um, met him this uh this honor and, and, and a fantastic victory at that. I mean, you when, when you talk about giving it all, there's, there's just no doubt. What a, what a great story, too. As uh, we're nearing the halfway point here of our list right now, and I, I have the list, uh, most outstanding performance at a men's championship, which, by the way, thanks for watching the GAC Weekly. Before this is all said and done, we'll, this will have been the longest GAC Weekly on record. So, yay, another uh, another record-setting performance you here. You can take a week off next week then if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Record-setting performance for Eric Moyer and for me here uh, on the program. Most outstanding performance at a men's championship. Henderson State men's golf, five-feeting. Are they going to trademark that that phrase, the five feet? I guess they'd have to ask who, like the Boston Celtics from the 50s. <laughs> exactly, uh, 60s. Brothers who may have done that season, 60s, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and Coach Schultz was, was – uh, it was all too proud of that team there. You know, they came in uh, ninth in the region. Uh, so they were squarely on the bubble for securing a spot to, to the regionals if they didn't perform well. And uh, and they and they did, you know, the other teams, obviously, they came in ranked higher within the league. Um, but they came through as a, as a team there and, and certainly what is – Becoming our most competitive sport when you look at how we fare in the you know regional and national competition. Uh, you already mentioned the Tech men made the national finals yet again. And if if you go and look at that leaderboard, it is very rare for a school outside of Florida to crack that top eight. And Tech has done it back to back years. 
you know, Southeastern made the national championships, and they think they were finished. They finished tenth or eleventh. Uh, you know, Harding made it back uh, consecutive years, and Southwestern's been a staple at regional play. Um, so for them to, to to come through the one of, certainly one of our hardest championship fields uh, and do it five years in a row is a credit to to Colt Schultz and the the players that he has re- recruited over there because it's definitely not one person that's been the anchor um, for this run. Yeah, and, and that's one of those things, too. I mean, when you talk about something that's gone on for five years, you've gone through a cycle that, you know, even players that can say, hey, listen, I won this four consecutive years, you weren't part of the fifth one, whether it be at the right. beginning or the end of that of that run, and it's a run that's current, so it may continue from there. I know that uh, the other golf programs in the league probably don't want to hear that, but that's – I mean, it's it's something that is, is still active now. Most outstanding performance in a women's championship in the GAC goes to Arkansas Tech softball. A good night, uh, winning the MVP, uh, winning with 43, by the way, winning the Legacy Award, 43% of the vote. Yeah, and she did it, uh, the, the, the precursor, I guess, to Shohei Otani, right? Your, your two-way performer, <laughs> uh, she hit 429 uh, at the plate, and, and didn't allow an earned run in 13 innings in the circle. Uh, you know, the NAMI that finished second there was Caitlin Brown uh, to the same tournament uh, where, where she uh, performed uh, superbly for the second year in a row. Uh, and she, you know, defeated nasty ranked SAU twice. But good night for the test of time. She won up, you know, she, she, she defeated, uh, she was in the circle twice against Southern Nazarene, took a shutout against them, um, and came with clutch hits throughout the, throughout the week. Uh, as Tech won their first title, and there's never not going to be an, 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 an unworthy champion for these for these awards. Uh, but certainly, she was the person that was called upon time and time again um, by her teammates, and she delivered in the clutch uh, throughout that week in Bentonville. You know that that was one of those things too. I mean, getting to watch those those games and seeing Caitlin Brown's performance, but obviously Ma- Megan Goodnight's as well, and considering the fact that in seven years that this was Arkansas Tech's first softball title, that in and of itself I, I think stood out to me as much as anything and, and a good night with a fantastic performance to lead her team. Female Breakthrough Athlete of the Year, another Arkansas Tech golden son. This one on the court, the volleyball court, Lexi Johnston. 44% yeah, uh, of the vote, by the way. Yeah, uh, another one where you know you look at, at the at the at the guys that finished third and fourth, and in other years they could probably have have been the been the uh, the winner. That's just how great our you know our our class of newcomers uh, was in the GAC. You know, Lexi, you know, certainly as, as mentioned before, helped with that undefeated season, um, and for the perceived disrespect that the GAC may get in volleyball, she was named you know the national freshman of the year by the AVCA. So they understood, you know, the impact she had uh, on that team, and and uh, you know, pretty evident to say that they would not have had the success they would have enjoyed without her uh, stepping up in such a major way. And just her her freshman year, you know, some of the other nominees there as breakthrough it just means your first year in the league. So some of them come in as you know, take a redshirt season or or are transfers in. But you know, she was a true freshman to to you know come into the middle uh, there. Um, in Russellville, and and just you know, again one of the the anchors uh, on that team. Well, uh, that's something too. Also, I would think that uh, for the folks there in Russellville, volleyball fans, if uh, Coach Byer is not there anymore, at, at least there you know there's there's definitely a lot to come back for this 2018-2019 season for Arkansas Tech volleyball. I mean, it's always going to be. A strong program. Male Breakthrough Athlete of the Year. Well, that's uh, headed uh, to Southwestern. Baseball, Alex Pimentel. Yeah, our closest vote, uh, just one percentage point between him and the East Central uh, freshman running back, Ontario Douglas. Uh, Pimentel became uh, you know, just the second uh, All-American uh, at Swasu during their D2 era. Uh, was our newcomer of the year in baseball. Uh and shine the brightest in the postseason where the Bulldogs got their, their first GAC tournament victory. Uh, he had three home runs at the, at the week uh, or at the, at the tournament. And in talking to him, you know, he, he, he was interesting to explain. He was, when I said, when does a hot streak turn into a great season? And it really wasn't <laughs> until the past, you know, couple final weeks of the year where he realized that you know, this, he's going to, you know, put together a real special season 
and uh, they say you just cap it off in, in spectacular fashion with how we performed at the GAC tournament. And good for Southwestern, too, to be able to get back in uh, to the postseason tournament. Of course, it back in Enid and uh, a crowd, you know, able to make the, the trip there to, to be able to see him and, and be a part of uh, their their postseason play. Upset of the year from the team of the year. Now, this, <laughs> this is where it gets to be a little bit interesting, I think, Eric. Uh, the team that's voted the team of the year, if they're the team of the year, are they still going to be able to pull off upsets? And apparently so, because during, uh, during their time over the course of the season, Harding football upset three top ten teams uh, in 2017. A fantastic season that was highlighted with some big wins and, of course, the playoff run. And, and being three top, t- top ten teams is no small feat, but they were all on the road. Exactly. Uh, you know, it was three consecutive weeks of head to Indianapolis, overcome a rain delay in the middle of the contest, <laughs> beat the Indianapolis team. You know, then they're busing back to Thursday, and then they're flying to Ohio to take on, a, uh, I think, a 10-1 and one Ashland team and, and beat them, you know, uh, and at least, you know, pretty pretty soundly in that one. You know, flight back, flight, uh, you know, then the next week up to, to Michigan to face Ferris State, who had knocked off Wachita. And, uh, you know, in, in talking to uh, Bryce Bray about about that game, the time of possession just was so in favor of the Bisons that, you know, they probably shouldn't have had to rely on a seven-minute drive at the end of the game to kick the game-winning field goal, but – they did, and you know, and to go uh, the Harding's you know highlights of the game. They run every play of that drive in the highlight package. It's a 16-play, seven-minute slog it out uh, you know, drive of you know when it's third and three they get five, when it's you know third and eight they get 11, and it was just backbreaking uh, against that, that Ferris State defense. And then Tristan Parsley kicks the uh, the short field goal as time expires to to give them the win and, and thus the, the region championship. Um, and and Parsley's had a, he's had a few of those in his time at Searcy as well. His, his name will long be remembered uh, with football success in Harding as well. Yeah, for sure. That's a, a lot uh, simpler of a task than the, the field, the 48 yarder he had to make up in Sioux Falls the year before uh, at the end of regulation. Um, but as fans of Harding knows, even these short kicks aren't guaranteed because how they, survived the game with Indy was there was a bot snapped on a kick inside the red zone and and uh, that was how Harding first won their first game um, came virtue of that of that defensive stand so uh, no kick take for granted and, and talking to both uh, Bryce on this specific uh, award and Gavin De Los Santos uh, on the team of the year side both of them as two of uh, Harding's star off the line both of them were lamenting that they didn't get to punch it in there when they were down <laughs> eliminate any doubt but both of them had confidence and Tristan and certainly he came through all right well the last two uh, c- categories here have the same winner a uh, record setting performance and the single game performance and the winner Washita's Drew Harris with touchdowns in the contest against Henderson State record setting performance got 39 percent of the vote single game performance got 36 percent of the vote six touchdowns in the battle of the, the six, I'm sorry, I apologize. Seven touchdowns. Seven. Battle of the, sorry, <laughs> excuse me. I was giving him six points. I'm, I, I six points. Uh, forgive me per score. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I've been thinking about scoring as well lately. So did you, he just got six points for each one of them. So uh, forgive me for short, Drew. Forgive me for shorting you one. Uh, Eric, I'm gonna yeah. let you go ahead and keep talking about this because I'm I'm not giving you all full credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this We're doing it live. This is what, what happens when we go on for as long as, as we do. Uh, yeah, you know, he, he shattered the touchdown record of the GAC that was, uh, I believe, 21 uh, when he got to 27 this year um, in the for the season, uh, or sorry, 26, and then he accounted for a 27 because he threw a touchdown pass in that, uh, that game versus SAU. And he was all too excited to talk about that one because all the rest of them were uh, a lot of them were of the same variety where he goes into that uh, you know, that direct snap position and with score was a, a force on the goal line, but he could also show he could break 
uh, long runs too. We had you know long touchdown runs against against uh, you know Tech, uh, um, long reception touchdowns uh, against Southern Nazarene where they came back to win late, uh, came back to win against again, against Tech. Um, you know the, the the multifaceted aspect in the SAU game and the seven uh, he scored uh, for a single game performance there against Henderson where he counted for all seven touchdowns in a. Um, a 49-42 win in the ravine that clinched the GAC uh, the GAC title, and, and that was a big deal as well. I mean, you know, with the, with the record-setting performance, it uh, you know it just it, it won't mean as much without the without the win and without the conference title, and and I know that's a big part of it as well. Yeah, and he was all too quick to point those out uh, in both cases that uh, the records are hollow without uh, you know meaning behind them, and. Uh, they said as, as, as the the whole year uh, came part of a GAC championship and the, the seven against uh, Henderson State directly contributed to them winning uh, an outright title and getting able to have bragging rights against their friends across the street. Well, the Legacy Awards for 2017-2018, and uh, as Eric Moyer and I have gone over that, again on the phone right now with Eric Moyer, the Associate Commissioner for the Great American Conference for communications, I hope we've communicated well today. I think we have. Again, this is the uh, this is now the longest GAC weekly on record in history. We've gone into season five. I think we're actually. I think doesn't this show take us into season six? <laughs> I think we've already we've, we've already we've already raced through a year. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Has football season started yet? I know we're pretty close on that, but it's not football season actually. That uh, you know I, that. Hit well, football season and volleyball actually got pretty much the same weekend. I know we were talking about volleyball and how close that is as well. Yeah, this year with the uh, with the altered schedule for the festival that volleyball kicks off or kicks off volleyball kicks off. That's what they do. Volleyball tips off, I guess. Serves off first serve. Uh, volleyball <laughs> starts. They st- it starts. Yes. Yeah. Um, a week earlier than than the rest of the of the of the regular season, they start off there on August 24th, and we have the first emails out to the coaches for a preseason poll. So that one will come out uh, actually in eight days here on August 2nd. Uh, soon after that, football will come out probably the week after that, and then uh, over the final two weeks of the the preseason, we'll knock out uh, golf and uh, and cross country. So. Uh, as, uh, as they say, summer's getting late early. Uh, <laughs> so we are, we are ramping up for a busy August, which then leads into busier Septembers and Octobers. And it's, it's, it's a fun time of year. And by the way, after those polls have been released, uh, Michael Westbrook and I will have the opportunity to visit with coaches and the Great American Conference uh, talking about countdown to first serve, Eric, for volleyball. Yep. And that's, what I've been told, that's how they start. <laughs> that's how they start. And the countdown to kickoff for football. And we'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to catch those, by the way, on the GAC website, greatamericanconference.com. Greatamericanconference.com. Eric, anything else to close us out on this record setting GAC weekly? No sense going any longer than it already has. I think we've covered <laughs> just about everything uh, around the GAC. All right. Well, we are go. (laughs) We'll be back next week, though. No doubt about that. I'll be back next week. Eric may be resting. I'm not sure. He may have to recover from this one. But uh, I gotta figure there'll be a higher profile person you can speak to in the league (laughs) than going back to back (laughs) with me. We do actually, and we do have some high profile folks on the way. I'm excited about some of the guests coming up on the GAC weekly as we push into the 2018-2019 campaign. In the meantime, thank you, Eric Moyer, for being with me today. And I have enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. As always, we do have a good time when we get to visit. I'm always here when you need me. (laughs) Wherever here is, right? That's right. All right. Uh, For Eric Moyer, I'm Joey McWilliams. This is the GAC Weekly. The GAC Weekly is presented by the Great American Conference. To hear this and more about the GAC and other college and high school sports, Please visit oklahomasports.net and arkansasports.net. And please do this now. Uh, Follow us and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to Midwest Sportsnet. Go to Midwest Sportsnet and subscribe, and you can catch all of the GAC weeklies that have been on video. Right there, you can go back and watch some of those. They're not as long as this one, 
but uh, but they are there. Thanks for watching. God bless you all. Have a great, great day.